His was the classic American success story. Born in Cuba in the 1950s, Jose Wahebi and his family were hit hard by the Castro Revolution. They made it to America with nothing, but they worked hard to build a new life. Young Jose grew up as a Florida kid with a particular obsession. He was fascinated by the sea and by fishing. I knew Jose was a special type youngster right from the get-go. He seemed to know the right things to want to know, and he really had the thirst for knowledge when it came to fishing. He's first and foremost an animal lover. I mean, he really does love to see the animals, love to see what they do. So I think that was a big part of what made Jose a fisherman, the connection that fishing brought you to those animals. It was that connection that led Jose to shine as he trained sea mammals at the Miami Seaquarium. As his passion for the water grew, so did his desire to become a fishing guide. I've seen guys come and they go, and some guys learn a little bit, and that's enough for them. For Jose, it was never enough. I mean, it was always about being good at all of it, which is very difficult. He really became a great tarpon guide, tarpon angler, and offshore, all the above. I mean, he was a student of this kind of fishing. But everything he did, he was a student. Jose was a student and Flip Pallet was the teacher. It was a productive relationship as the two shared an amazing bond and friendship through the years, with Jose appearing as a guest many times on Flip's TV show. In those early years of his guiding, I was just starting a television series called The Saltwater Angler and probably had Jose as a guest half a dozen times. Jose was, Jose was very young and and his guide uniform in those days was uh, little speedo running pants, uh, big huge tennis shoes, he had a good sized foot on him, and hair, this curly black hair, and he was so energetic. And he was a good guide, I mean, he knew where to go, knew the tides. Uh, we had uh, very successful shows every time Jose was a guest. <laughs> That thing looks so funny sticking out of the mouth of that bonita. <laughs> looks like a white cigar. I out can't of his believe mouth. this. <laughs> Golly. Unreal. Man, that's a nice drag on that thing. I've caught some pretty impressive fish on that little outfit right there. You know what's funny too is they don't seem to fight as well with a plug in their mouth. No, not nearly as much. Many who knew him saw in Jose an honest, carefree personality that would be perfect for television. Tournament director Gary Ellis remembers what led to his big break. j and Productions come to the Keys wanting to, uh, to do a Mariner Outboards tournament trail. And uh, Jerry McInnes gave me a call, said, we want to televise your event. He specified that he needed two celebrities, two of the best guides I could find. So I put together, at first I picked Jose right off the bat to be one of our guides. I was to be with a cameraman, and we were gonna follow Jose and his, uh, and his guest for the day. And uh, we're getting ready to go out, and he's upset because he's afraid the guide that is in the boat with me is gonna find out where his good fishing places are at, and that's not gonna work. And so I promised Jose, well, I'll put a blindfold on my guide as we go out uh, uh, across the keys there, and uh, everything will be all right. Just drop your rod a little bit to cushion it. You just barely see him flashing out there. Looking straight up now. Straight up. Take your time. Don't overamp him in these, in these yeah, quarters. OK. Easy, easy. Pull him, pull him to the left. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> Wow. All right. Yo, good move. <sighs> All right. <laughs> During that day, I really bonded with Jose and really bonded with him over the laugh we had at the end of the day. His reputation preceded him a little bit. He was the kind of the guy everybody was, was talking about, was on everyone's mind. He was a well-established character in the guide community there. And, and, you know, of course, when we met him, we realized there was something more, <laughs> more to it than that. I knew within 60 seconds of being was 
Jose that morning that this was a guy that needed to be on television. When Jose got his own show, he never made an attempt to imitate anything. He just went and did his own, his own show. The one thing he never ever wanted to do was just be that guy that would catch a fish and hold it up for the camera and, you know, scream and yell and do all that kind of stuff and then, you know, let it go or whatever. He, he didn't want any part of that. Jose would do his own television show but he would insist on doing one unlike any others. He wanted to fish his way, inshore and offshore, to tell stories his way, and to take the viewer on an unexpectedly exciting trip every time. When we return, a star is born. The fishing world at large is introduced to Jose Wahebe as host of the Spanish Fly. My name is uh, Captain Jose Wahebe. I take people fishing for a living. From his birth in Cuba to his early career in South Florida, Jose Wahebe had relentlessly pursued his passion for fishing. Now, he was set to share that vision with the rest of the world via his own television show. In January 1995, he appeared on national television for the first time in his new capacity as host of The Spanish Fly. Yo me, yo me llamo Jose Wehebe. Okay, Capitan Jose Wehebe. My name is uh, Captain Jose Wehebe. No te olvides de eso. Y lo que yo hago es salgo persona a pescar. I take people fishing for a living. La entro en mi lancha, empiezo los motores, salimos para afuera, put them in my boat, and take them out and catch them whatever they want to catch. Saltwater Tackle Box, the mentor is presented by Plano Tackle Systems, America's favorite tackle boxes. One of the things that I noticed as Jose went on to become a television personality himself was that he had this incredible ability that very, very, very few people have to peer into the camera and talk to the camera in a way that made the viewer feel like he was talking directly to them. Yeah, all right, back into the bucks. That's it, huh? Loud in not only color, but shape and appearance. Jose had just the most natural way talking to his viewing audience in television trip, trip. about what to do and how to do it, what lures to use and baits to use under certain conditions. And it came so natural with him. And he'd sit there and just talk to you, and people loved it. The fly will bounce up, and then the lead eyes will make it go down, just like a little shrimp trying to escape into the, into the grass. And then you pop it up again and go up like that, and then it'll dive back down. Being there at the beginning of the Spanish fly and being a fishing guide myself, um, I was very impressed with the show, and I was very impressed with the, with the natural ability that Jose came forward with. Jose's natural ability on camera was obvious from the start. He could bring the intensity and authority without seeming forced. He was showing the world a different side of fishing and fishermen. It's not exactly calm as the lake out here. <laughs> that, all that is, it's one huge, huge school of bait. What they are, they're, they're a combination of uh, what we call sand key pilchers and also another type of pilcher called a razor belly. I started, you know, going by this island to do some sail fishing out here. And I saw a few birds work and I went, huh, you know, and I stopped there. Usually it's the birds that cue, cue you. You see pelicans dive and see pelicans dive and you go, you know, could be ballyhoo, which I don't use very much, could be glass minnows, which I don't use at all. Uh, or it could be these guys, which I use a lot. Okay, reverse, reverse, reverse. 
Reverse. Reverse. Go, 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 go. Hard right, put the left motor forward. <laughs> the show encompassed so many things about Jose's life that he loved and that you know that he embraced some music. Jose always had music going on in his house. He loved music, and it didn't matter what kind of music. Jose loved a, a broad range of music, and he liked to play music. So I think it was very natural that he brought music into the show because he liked music. He was over my house all the time playing uh, guitar with, with myself and my musician buddies. And uh, of course, everybody loved him. You know, he's, he's the principal guy that he is, and uh, we became very good friends. Terry Cassidy was a friend who shared Jose's love for both fishing and his other passion of music. He was the first guest on Spanish Fly, episode one. I remember I was heading out uh, west to Key West, out in uh, Boca Grande, and um, of course, uh, he said, we're gonna catch sharks. And I was looking around the boat, and all I saw was spinners, and I'm thinking to myself, we're going to catch some pretty small sharks because, you know, I don't see any big boat rods. It was, uh, it was really neat where you could actually see the sharks coming from 100 yards out. See, the water was so shallow, you could actually see them zigzagging through the scent from the chum line. And as they were zoning in on the bait, the, the zigzagging would become tighter and tighter until it would zone right in on the bait that we had out. You got it, Donnie? No, uh -uh, you don't have it, I don't think. Coming up again. Here he comes. He's now he got it. Okay. Wind up. Fail. Wind up. Set, set, set. Right. <laughs> Good job. Oh, he's a monster. That is a hog. Terry, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess around here. I'm gonna go right after him. Right. I think there's a few things he'd like to do before I catch him. Uh, there was this one point where he got it in the, in the show where he got in the water to actually do some filming and I was really totally against that. He had been my buddy and I'm like, going, I don't think that's a good idea. That's a black tip. He's about six foot. And uh, I mean, if you want to play guitar, you know, you want all your fingers, I think, I think you better rule that one out. He jumped in the water with the camera and said, you know, no, no worries, bro. No worries. Slow down. So, hose is underneath you. Right this way, Bubba. I like this at all. Right underneath you. Give me the line, Jerry. You got it, Rose. We'll chase the shark, Rose. Oh! Holy s***. He's going right at He's going right at I felt like I lost him. He saw Jose and he freaked. I love to dive. I really do love to dive. I, I kind of miss it a lot. There's, there's just something about being weightless and looking around, you know, and just, just kind of not, not really being bound by anything that's pretty neat. And it's also neat from a fisherman's perspective, you know, because when you fish a lot of days on top of the water, Okay, and that's all you're doing fishing on top of the water. You kind of lose sight of what it looks like from down here. And then to get in, in the water, underwater, and to look around and see, oh, look at that little ledge there. That must be where they like to hide. And it's, it's, a, it's a really neat perspective to kind of get it from there. He's right there, Hose. Coming right at you, Hose. I don't like this. I saw him go right at you. He was level with you too, wasn't he? Was so, yeah, he was right, right up here. Looking right at our view. Oh, he's black tip in it? Yeah. It's just it's tough in here, man. You know, I, I can't I, see him until I, he's right I I really this do. far from me. I don't, I don't like this area. <laughs> I don't like you in this area. 
And he doesn't like you in this area either. You didn't seem to that last time. The Road Less Traveled is brought to you by Costa Del Mar. See what's out there. I think a lot of people knew Spanish fly before Jose Wahebe. They didn't really know, you know, I would hear Spanish fly, Spanish fly, Spanish fly, and then I'd be like, yeah, yeah, man, that's Jose. You know, there's, there's so many things. I, I think at, at the core is just how real Jose was. Um, the, the enthusiasm and everything that you saw there were, were so genuine. Jose thought so carefully about every shoot from start to finish. What was nice for me is that it was nice to see someone on TV that actually knew what they were doing. Because you get guys that get on TV because they got connections and they really don't know what they're doing. They usually go with a guy that really knows what they're doing and feed off of them and, and whatnot, but he didn't need that. You could see that, you know, on camera. You know, if you don't know a lot, it's easier to make a decision where to go in the morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and when you know too much, it's like you got to run through every th all the options in your mind of what you want to do that that day. Uh, there is a lot to learn. There really is. You know, and you can you can almost know too much. One thing that Jose was adamant about was showing the viewer every facet of fishing, both inshore and offshore. The great flats guides generally just fish flats. You know, and the great offshore guys fish offshore. It's not, it's very unusual to find somebody that's really, really good at both. The knowledge is huge and you just don't get it overnight. And you, you can only really acquire it if you're really passionate about it. Right here today, I don't know anybody that does both, that did both as proficiently as, uh, as Jose did. Being a guy that almost involves a certain amount of repetition, you know. This, this time of year you do this, you do this, you do this. This time of year you do that, you do that. So, so I think the, the, my favorite thing is just doing something different, you know. A couple days of tarpon fishing, I'm happy. A couple days of bone fishing, that's enough. You know, a couple days of tuna fishing, that's enough. I kinda, I really, it's really hard for me to say that there is a favorite. The beauty of this place is, is just all the different areas that you have available to you within a run. This Florida Keys moment is presented by the Florida Keys and Key West. What happens is these shrimp boats go out at night and they drag their nets all night long for shrimp. In the morning they clean the shrimp out of that bycatch and, and take that bycatch and throw it overboard. In a certain area in the Gulf, in a certain time of year, the tunas and bonitas move in. So what happens is that those fish that are in that area learn that the shrimp boats mean food. So what we do is we run to these places and in the morning, you know, we try to get up early enough that we catch these shrimpers before they go to bed and we get some chum from them. And it's amazing when you pick the right boat that has the right school of fish and you throw that chum in the water. I mean, you look down and it's like a, a zoo. I mean, there's, there's blue things darting all around and there's black things darting through there. You know, the blue things are the bonitas and the black things are the black thing tunas. All right, I want you to bring it up and Something's put it right in it. here. Put it in this pile, just lift, good. Drop your rod, let it sit there. There, that's a tuna, let him eat it. Okay, go ahead, lift, 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 lift. Okay, let go, let go, let him go, let him go. He's, we're in. Smoking. Just wanna keep him going here a little bit if I can, Mike. Sure, will they hang up by the shrimp boat? No, they're, we, we've, we've, They're gonna hang with us. We're huh? gonna hang with us now. We've lost, you know, we pulled them off that boat. And so now it's real important to keep them with us because, you know, if we quit chumming and then they disappear back out here, we have no place to go to pick them up again. Right. Okay. So it's really important just to kind of keep them with you, keep them uh, identified with the boat as being food. Look at this guy. Oh, huh? yes. Is that beautiful, Mike, or what? Woo! Gotcha. Hello, Mama. Hold still, sweetheart. Hold still. We'll be done in a minute. That's great, Jose. That is a job. Is that a beauty, Mike? Is that beautiful? That is a job. <laughs> People, when they watch a television show, they want to learn. And Jose had a fine manner, a fine way of 
helping them learn the best ways to do it and the proper ways to do it. The show was the very best because of Jose. Jose had an incredible personality, had incredible charisma. A lot of people see Jose now uh, on his TV show. You're seeing the glamour end of Jose. You're seeing the product of everything that he worked to get there. And I don't think there's any doubt in anybody's mind that as Jose grew as a television personality, he surpassed everybody that helped him along the way. I mean, he became the one who set the bar. Fishing was the driving force in his life, and his home field was definitely the Florida Keys. Next time on Spanish Fly, a celebration, mastering the Florida Keys.